Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for joining the Truth Produces Freedom podcast. Um, last week, we talked about the word truth and um, its meaning and how it's reality of the kingdom. And it's not based on earthly things or facts that the, the way the world sees it. But truth is God's truth, God's reality, the way God sees things. Um, and that's the truth that makes us free. Um, and uh, one of the things I... Uh, mentioned in there is Second Peter 3 where uh, Peter was talking about um, Paul and his writings and how people twisted them um, as well as the other scriptures he said um, uh, he said that they would they were twisting them to their own destruction so um, we I was just uh, hitting on that about how like if it is destruction it's a twist you know um, and so if what you think is truth is not f producing freedom as this podcast is called and it's actually destructive um, and you'd say well how is it destructive well does it produce freedom does it bind you does it keep you trapped and less than what God created then it's then it's not truth um, but uh, I mentioned about that uh, um, about how people twist to their own destruction um, and how they teach about their so-called revelations that aren't truth because they're not producing freedom um, and it's just causing destruction really um, and so I actually want to read uh, a section of the first draft of my book from chapter 7 page 10 where I actually um, talk about this subject and this scripture um, I just want to sh uh, share um, share that with you um so uh, page 10 of chapter 7 uh out of the first draft of my book um it says i this is what i say in it so right now i'll begin um, now let's examine peter's words about paul and how people have twisted his words to their own destruction and have formed false beliefs after the study that we just did it will be enlightening to read Peter's first words in this dialogue of 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13. He is talking about the day of the Lord and the end of the ages, and then says that because this day is coming, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? And then he goes on to say, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot, and blameless and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given him has written to you as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which some things are hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures you therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Second Peter three, fourteen through 18 you see how Peter's words point out to us that one of the main subjects which he is referring to in regard to Paul's writings is his teachings on grace and freedom from sin. The two main subjects we see that Peter is speaking on in which he refers to Paul and how people twist his words are the subjects of the day of the Lord's return and our freedom from sin through God's grace. Peter said, we should be people of holy conduct and godliness in these last days and said that we should be diligent to be found by the Lord without spot and blameless just as Paul teaches then he said knowing these truths we must beware so that we don't fall from our steadfastness and be led away by the error of the wicked then last of all he tells us to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord the grace that empowers us and liberates us. I also want to point out what he specifically highlighted about the people who twist Paul's words and all the scriptures. He said they twist them 
to their own destruction. Therefore, truth never leads to destruction or bondage. The truth of Scripture does not lead us to being bound in any way to sin. Truth makes us free. People that preach that we are destined to sin are still sinners and that we can't live free from sin are not preaching the truth or the scriptures accurately because truth frees us. It does not bound us. Only if you twist the scripture will it lead to destruction. If what someone teaches produces falling from steadfastness, failure, and sin consciousness, it is not truth. Like people do with Romans 7 and 1 John 1 which people continue to cling to, ripping it 100% right out of its actual context and clearly definitive meaning. Preaching failure and sin consciousness is twisting the scripture to your own destruction and falling from steadfastness. It is not truth. If what you're believing or your supposed, supposed revelation that you think you have from scripture does not produce freedom and transformation it is not truth truth produces freedom in the life of a believer it does not enslave us or bind us to sin sin consciousness enslavement to sin and being doomed to sin is not truth it's the opposite of truth in what scripture teaches truth produces freedom amen thanks be to god for our deliverance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that was the the two pages in my book um, on that subject, and my my whole book is about freedom from sin, and it's called "Go and Sin No More." It's about what Jesus said in John eight eleven, and um, but I, what I wanted to hone in on that is is about the twisting of Scripture, and how that. Um, it's destructive and when you read that whole passage in Peter it's it's all empowering it's all freedom it's all truth that that makes us free you know I say that all the time in this podcast but it's the foundation of it and I'm probably gonna say it a lot in the first few episodes and and uh, so I mean I it's just is what it is but um yeah what I want I just wanted to mention that because it I really got into how um, people twist the scripture and that's kind of the subject um, of this episode and I and uh, yeah I just think I it was better for me to just read that instead of um, trying to break all that down Um, even though that ventures into some subjects we're not quite into right at this moment but um, yeah I mean like I was talking about in in that uh, section of my book is the doctrine of sin and always gonna sin is not truth it is bondage. It's not truth that makes you bound and imprisoned. Truth frees from the prison, frees you from the prison. I'm reminded of the, the beautiful story of Peter and his prison escape in Acts 12. He was free. He was absolutely free. But knowing truth and realizing truth made him free in his own thinking. And he ran in his freedom away from the prison gate instead of staying there thinking he was still in the prison read the story it's really beautiful it's a really great picture of this concept of freedom um there's a lot of people that are 100 percent freed by christ but they're still hanging around the prison gates not thinking they're freed because it just seems like a dream to them but Peter was free and when it says that he came to himself he realized the truth and the reality the truth the reality and then he knew it was real like obviously then he knew that what happened wasn't a dream that he was actually miraculously freed from that prison and then so he gets the heck out of there and but so many people are hanging around the prison gate still thinking that they're bound but they're not and so anyway that's just i just had to briefly uh, talk about that because I love I love it. I love that story. It's so beautiful uh, in relation to how Christ has freed us. Um, but what what I wanted to kind of dig into is is um, the the twisting of the scriptures. And 
I wanted to talk about how in the Bible there are these perfectly, absolutely black and white scriptures that are crystal clear. Um, And I find it interesting that when Jesus spoke clearly is when people didn't understand. Uh, is when the when when the sorry when the disciples didn't understand and were like, huh? When Jesus spoke clearly, no parable. Clearly, they were like, uh, uh, what? Like they didn't understand. He's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to be crucified, and in three days, I'm going to rise. And they don't understand. So, it's it's so interesting to me. So Jesus spoke in parables and in prophetic. Um, language and in parables so often uh, and then when he spoke crystal clear they assumed it had to have some other meaning than what he was actually saying and I feel like this is really what modern day believers do with the scriptures as we talk all the time about what we think that not so clear scriptures mean and then try to toss aside or reinterpret the crystal clear scriptures. I've heard so many sermons in such confident pride on scriptures that are very much up for interpretation and debate, but rarely do I hear any sermons on the matters that are crystal clear and aren't up for any reinterpretation or debate. In fact, I I think the absolute crystal clear passages are just flat out ignored by many believers it's crazy to me and and why is this i mean i i don't know all i don't know all the reasons but a few reasons that that i can think of of why this is why people do this and and continue in that mindset that when god speaks clear you have to twist it and turn it into some bigger deeper meaning that it must not mean what it sounds like like so so why is this why do people do that i think some of them a few of the main reasons there's probably a lot and it gets a lot deeper than this but a few of the reasons i could think of is um people being overconfident in their personal beliefs and being afraid to change what they believe i think that's a huge one is having such overconfidence and pride in what you already believe and being afraid to change what you believe to be corrected and that is that is a big issue that people need we need to humble ourselves and let the word of god constantly change the way we think if we go into the word of god already thinking we know um the truth of everything and already being a know-it-all then we'll read scripture that proves what we think or believe wrong and we'll ignore it or we'll twist it. But we have to stay humble and teachable and not be overconfident in, in the beliefs you already have. You need to form your beliefs on the full context, actual, like every what the word of God says, the crystal clear, build your foundation on the black and white crystal clear scriptures that's where you have to start and let the word of god change the way you think renew your mind by the word of god what just like romans 12 you know be transformed by the renewing of your mind um and so yeah i think overconfidence in personal beliefs and being afraid to change what you believe is a big one Uh, another one is just straight up unbelief like you just don't believe what you're reading you've your your experiences and how life has been for you just causes you to have a hardened heart and you don't believe what you read and we need to believe what we read in the bible we need to believe it like we need to stop when we go to the word and read we need to stop reading what we already believe and think we believe about it like reading it through that lens and we need to start believing what we read and letting that change our view and how we see it so we need to stop reading what we believe and start believing what we read because you can form all kinds of ideas and beliefs based on the bible but it's always a twist it's always a twist you can get to the complete unadulterated 
truth of scripture and 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 stop twisting it and there's a lot that is just crystal clear um so yeah the third one i think is so the overconfidence um and your beliefs unbelief and then the third one is i mean it relates to the other the first one a little obviously but um it's arrogance it's just pride like you're, it's just unwillingness it's not like the first one's more i'm more of saying like uh, more of a fear like you already have your beliefs established and like you're afraid uh, to change what you believe but now the third one I'm saying is arrogance I think people are just prideful they are they're know-it-alls they think they can never be corrected they won't even let the writers of the Bible correct what they believe it is crazy like you have entire books of the Bible that you just need to throw in the trash if you're going to believe some of the things that you do like that people do like you you have to let the word of god cut you and humble you and change your views because there's so many that already have their views set before they they come to the scriptures and so then they just read they read it through what they already think the way they already think and the Bible's meant to change the way we think constantly, constantly. Never hold too tight to any belief you have. You're like, well, what about the absolutes? Well, I think the absolutes might be different than you think. So why don't you come to all of it humbly and reestablish some of those absolutes? At, le at least start there. Like enter with humility. Yes, there are absolutes in scripture, but there are things that people think are absolutes that aren't. And there are things that people think aren't absolutes that are so let, just, just start from scratch and humbly receive the word of God and start over. You know, the only absolute I'd say, right, like you should start with, I guess, well, let would, would be Jesus is Lord. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. Yes, that is an absolute truth. But even that, like if you're not humble enough to, to let the Bible continue to renew your mind, even that you should start from scratch go into the bible and let that truth be re be reestablished even like that i mean you that can happen like instantly but you know what i'm saying just humble just come humble <laughs> just come humble humbly to the word and start over let truth be established in you and and humbly receive what it what it says and read in full context read in full context and understand what the bible is really saying stop ripping out verses that like they're fortune cookies and and uh, not understanding what is going on in the scripture not understanding the full passage chapters and verses were only added a few hundred years ago they are not the inspired they were not a part of the original inspired words of the prophets that wrote the bible they are honestly horribly placed um so i i actually have a few bibles i uh years ago i bought a bible that has no chapters and no verses so that i could learn how to read the scripture without those um separations so that i could always understand what is before and after like when when a bible verse starts with the word therefore like why is it there like what's it therefore like it sounds silly and you probably chuckle when i say that but i'm dead serious like if a bible verse starts the word therefore it's not a standalone thought you have to know what is before it it's a continuation and so there's so many chapters so many verses that start in the middle of a thought and people rip out scriptures these individual phrases and verses as if they're absolute truths but they're they're ripped out of the the context of what they actually said and this happens with first john 1 8 romans 7 i get into all that in my book it, that that is it's just crazy to me but um <clears throat> anyway yeah so those three things overconfidence personal beliefs unbelief and arrogance there's probably a lot more but those are the ones i think of um and it's great yeah it's just crazy how how confidently people will preach their interpretation about a scripture passage that is really not a hundred percent crystal clear and is up for interpretation 
and then there are black and white 100 percent crystal clear passages in the bible that people twist and say that it must it, it can't possibly really mean that because they already believe differently in that they're actually they actually don't believe what the bible says clearly and it's it's crazy um like do you like do you know how many scriptures have like how many scriptures have to be completely disregarded and ignored to believe certain doctrines that people have like it is it's madness like i said you you should just rip those books out of your bible and throw them in the trash because you have to flat out ignore crystal clear truths in order to believe some of these things it's crazy and so like the reason I, I'm saying all this, you know, with this subject of truth um, uh, and with the scriptures, I think, like, I, the, less, the less clear scriptures must be interpreted and tested through the crystal clear ones, not the other way around. You sh we shouldn't be taking the crystal clear black and white phrases and statements and teachings of the apostles and of Jesus and filtering them through our revelation we think we have or our interpretation we think we have from another scripture that isn't black and white that is that is madness that is silly we must interpret the clear scriptures through the or we must interpret the unclear scriptures through the crystal clear ones always we have to have that as the foundation not the other way around and it's like people they form doctrinal belief through a not so clear scripture and try to reinterpret but and then they try to reinterpret the crystal clear one but really they're just flat out ignoring it and and it has no room for reinterpretation but they have to flat out ignore it in order to embrace their belief on the not so clear scripture and so yeah i know that that was a lot and i was like you might be like whoa um but i just think this is such an important subject that we need to approach the bible correctly we need to understand the truth um fully and and interpret correctly and so yeah i just uh i wanted to get into that more and and yeah i definitely will touch on that here and there i'm, I'm sure uh when it comes uh to it but get a you know get a bible without chapters and verses if if you haven't um experienced that kind of reading i would highly recommend that there's some great ones out there you just search google search or amazon search um, Bible without chapters or verses you'll you'll find some there's some that have like tiny little indicators like on the corner or on the sides that you would have to intentionally look over to to see um, but they're still like there you read it like a book so you get the full thought um, of the writers and and yeah so I, I'm really big into understanding that and knowing context and um, seeing not ripping scriptures out like seeing the full thought and the full teaching of the writers because people twist scriptures all the time through that you see scriptures posted places all the time that that start with therefore or for or or uh, because or like it's clearly in the middle of a thought and you just rip it right out and we just sound silly when we quote scriptures like that too and it's like it's just yeah it's it's strange <laughs> but um yeah, I wanted to get into that some and uh, just talk about um, how important it is to understand the scriptures and not twist them anymore and read in context and know uh, and humble yourself and, and see um, the scriptures with that humble heart that, that changes what you believe through the scriptures instead of changing the scriptures through what you already want to believe. It happens so easily. People do it all the time. And we must constantly let the scriptures change the way um, that we believe and we see and, and not the other way around. And so, yeah, truth makes us free. Um, and the word of God is beautiful and amazing. And so we're going to continue to dig into it and into the different 
subjects of these truths, these common things that are twisted, and and get to, yeah, the full context and foundation of the, of these things. Like there's there's things in the Bible that are so clear that are people flat out ignore, and those are the things that I want to dig into. Those are the things I want to talk about uh, that I don't want to be afraid of. That uh, I want to preach the unadulterated, unfiltered truth of the gospel and of what Jesus paid for us in the life that we that, that he has for us in our destiny. So thank you. Uh, I think that's all I, I think that's all I have for this episode. And um, thank you so much for uh, listening in on the Truth Produces Freedom podcast. Uh, you, can, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jonah Smith Preaches and Teachings. Um, you can find me uh, on YouTube um, at the Truth Produces Freedom podcast. Obviously, I have the podcast that you're listening to now. I'm also working on a WordPress blog, so find me on there uh, on all those things. Uh, Truth produces freedom. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for listening in. Uh, may God bless you. I pray that He would empower you to live a life worthy of the calling, and uh, that you would walk in the 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 miraculous, beautiful things of God that He has for you, and the in the destiny that He puts you on earth for. So thank you so much for listening. God bless all of you guys in Jesus' name. <laughs>